Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to take just a quick second to share with you my top three Maligator Mom must-haves. First on my list is Tactipup.com. Now these are the collars that you see my dogs wearing in all my videos, and I personally prefer the two inch width. You can get them with their name embroidered on them, and I always have them add a handle. These collars are made with a cobra buckle and all metal hardware. They are incredibly durable and they are made right here in the USA. So if you're interested, check out tactipup.com and use my code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10%. And number two, everybody wants to know, what do you feed your dogs? Well, this is it. I feed my dogs Munster Milling. Now this is a customizable kibble, so you can actually go onto their website and select additives that they will mix fresh into your bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. I add things like bacon fat, salmon oil, probiotic, and freeze-dried elk. If you're interested, use my code MALLIGATORMOM and you will save 55% off your first custom bag. And number three, if you are interested in online dog training videos, you definitely need to check out robertcabral.com. I have consumed a lot of online dog training videos and Robert is by far the best. Head over to robertcabral.com, use code MALLIGATORMOM. Okay, that, that looked a lot cooler in my head. Hey guys, oh God, nope, nope, nope. Maybe if I come in from the other side. Welcome back. Nope, still no good. One more time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. That was so lame. You know, intros are harder to come up with than you would think. I always start out trying to like do something like, woo, let's get into the video. And then it turns out just being like, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. And today we are going to be talking all about the prong collar. So this is a tool that gets a bit of a bad rap. And at first glance, you could understand why. This is definitely a tool that is used as an aversive. And so a lot of people in the force-free community are coming after trainers and more specifically tools that are used as part of a balanced training approach. And that includes tools like the prong collar or the e-collar, for example. Now, I think that um, it's our responsibility as balanced trainers who use tools like this to put out good, solid information about these tools, which includes things like how to use them properly, why to use them, and when to use them. Not all dogs are ever going to need uh, a prong collar. This is not appropriate for every dog. In fact, I think probably the majority of dogs out there, pet dogs, are never going to need a tool like a prong collar. But that's not what this channel is about. This channel is about working dogs and more specifically, the most elite working dog on the planet, which is the Belgian Malinois. And I think that you will find that at some point in your training, it's probably gonna come into play. So I want to take the, the time today to sit down and have a discussion about this tool, get some good information out there, and then I'm actually gonna show you how I'm going to introduce this to my puppy, Crisis. And yes, I said puppy. I am going to put a prong collar on my Belgian Malinois puppy who is six months old. Now, um, this is going to be something that she has not seen before, and I wanted to save the introduction of this prong collar to my six-month-old puppy for this video specifically so that you can see exactly how I go about introducing this, this collar, or this tool, in a safe, humane way. I don't think that it's a good idea to throw a prong collar on any dog, puppy or not, and just start popping away at the leash. That is not okay, folks. And that's not how uh, balanced trainers understand how to use this tool. So let's get some good information. If this is a tool that you think you wanna use and introduce into your training regimen with your dog, whether it's a Belgian Malinois or, or any other breed, then I think today is gonna to be a pretty good informational video. So uh, stay tuned and let's learn about the prong collar today. So 
So before we get into actually discussing introducing a prong collar to your dog, whether it's a Belgian Malinois or any other breed, whether it's a puppy or an adult, makes no difference. What you first need to establish is that your dog understands leash pressure. That's number one. I would never introduce a prong collar to a dog that does not understand leash pressure. Now this is of course case specific. Each dog is different and I have seen some cases of reactive dogs or dogs that need some rehabilitation training where you do have to jump to a prong right away because this dog is a red zone dog who doesn't understand the slight cues and pressures that come off from a, a tool like a, a slip lead here and need a more clear form of communication. That is not what we are talking about, okay? That is a completely separate discussion and a completely different type of training and, and dog that I know nothing about and that I have no experience with. I do not have experience working with reactive dogs and so I do not speak on topics that I do not understand. There are many people out there um, there's some great trainers that know and understand how to work with complex behavioral issues and reactive dogs. I am not one of them. So I am speaking in general terms when it comes to introducing a tool like a prong collar to your Belgian Malinois. Now, before you introduce a prong collar, I always make sure that my dogs first understand what leash pressure means. And in order to do that, the very first thing, the first tool, the first leash and collar I ever introduced to my dog as a puppy is going to be a slip lead. Now a slip lead is actually a tool that is fantastic for teaching leash pressure to a dog. So a slip lead looks just like this. And this is a little, this is a small one actually that I used uh, with crisis, but basically this goes over the neck and then you have this tab right here that will cinch up tight around the dog. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. You're gonna want this collar right up high around the ears and the neck so that you lead the dog around from the ears and the neck very high, right? That's where those pressure points are, are and where it's going to be the easiest for your dog to understand those cues of that pressure and that guidance that you're providing with that leash. So let's go ahead and put this on Storm and I can show you how to properly fit a slip lead onto your dog. And it's important to understand as well that a slip lead can actually be a more dangerous tool and cause more damage than a prong collar can. So this is actually a very serious tool. Do not let the benign nature of the look and aesthetic of this tool fool you. This can be incredibly dangerous and you can cause a lot of harm to your dog if this is not fitted and placed correctly. So let me show you exactly what it should look like. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to put this slip lead properly onto Storm. So I'm gonna slip this over her neck. And then as you can see, if you can come in closer, I'm gonna put this up high on her neck and I'm gonna bring this tab down. That way, this is sitting up nice and high so that when I need to apply leash pressure, I'm doing it up high. The pressure points on the dog are gonna be more sensitive up here than they are down here on the neck. We also don't want her wearing this down here because she can strangle, she can hurt her neck, her trachea. It's just not a good place for that to be sitting. We want it sitting nice and high, just like this. Storm, let's go. So what makes this tool more dangerous than this tool is that your dog can actually strangle with this tool. This can get cinched up really tight and cause damage to the trachea, to the neck, and to the throat. Whereas if you are using a prong collar, because of the way this des is designed, it actually distributes the pressure evenly around the neck. So you cannot strangle your dog the same way that a tool like this can. So again, these are very dangerous tools, both of them. But if you were to ask me out of the two, which is more dangerous, a prong collar or a slip lead, hands down, we see more dogs injured from a slip lead than we do from a prong collar. So now that we've seen how to properly fit a slip lead onto your dog, we're going to talk about how to introduce leash pressure using this tool. So I've gone ahead and I've just put the slip lead over my fist and we're gonna pretend that the fist is my dog 
and here I am pulling on my dog, right? And we all know this, like, come on, come on, let's go this way, this way, and your dog either stands firm and plants, or they pull and provide that opposition reflex because they don't want to go in that direction, and it turns into this tug of war, and that's where a tool like a slip lead can actually become a strangulation device and do damage and harm. So it's really important that you understand what the right amount of pressure is this is vital that you understand this. Now, if this is my dog, and I want my dog to move in this direction for the sake of this example here, you're not gonna see me doing this, okay? Th that is wrong. That is not the appropriate amount of leash pressure. What I want you to do is provide something that your dog likes in the form of a reward or a treat and have that ready to go. Whatever you can do to get your dog to move in this direction, I don't care what it is, bribe them with hot dogs, do your thing. You want your dog to understand how to turn this leash pressure off. And if that means moving in your direction to receive a retreat, there's nothing to receive a treat, then there's nothing wrong with that. That's dog training, that's great. So this is leash pressure. Now. This is not enough leash pressure, right? This is too much leash pressure. This is just the right amount of leash pressure. What you're gonna look for is that the line here is taut. You're not dragging your dog, you're not strangling your dog, but the leash is taut. It's not down here, it's not out here, it's right here, okay? Just enough that there's a little give here that you can cue to your dog through slight pressure the direction that you want him to move. Now the real trick to dog training and teaching your dog to understand how to turn that pressure off is when you release the pressure. You have to be very in tune and be paying very close attention to your dog because the second that your dog moves in the direction that you want him to move, so maybe he's moving towards that hot dog that you're bribing him with, the second he moves in that direction, that leash pressure comes off, okay? That's how you teach your dog to make that decision. That's how he begins to understand that if you are pulling or there's pressure in this specific direction, all I have to do to turn off that uncomfortable pressure is move in that direction and immediately there's slack in the line and that pressure goes off. That is how you teach leash pressure. So now let's talk about the prong collar and what some reasons are that you might want to introduce this to your training regimen. And my why might be completely different from your why, and that's okay. But let me explain to you why I like to use a prong collar with my dogs. Now, it is my belief that purely positive training leaves a lot of guesswork to the dog. In my opinion, there is not enough communication that comes through when you only are taking advantage of one quadrant of training. I think that it takes a balanced approach. And part of using a prong collar is providing clear communication to the dog. Now, if you're like me, you might be someone who appreciates clear communication. If somebody wants from something from me, I want them to tell me just exactly what it is so that I can fulfill that request. I do not want to be guessing what it is that you want from me. Just tell me what it is. That's where the prong collar um, comes into play for me. This is just something that provides a very clear form of communication to the dog. Now, before we move on to actually introducing this prong collar to my puppy crisis for the first time, I do want to take a second to talk about the, um, the product itself. So not all prong collars are created equal, and we're going to discuss why real quick. Now, I personally only use Herm Springer prong collars on my dogs, and I do that for a few, for a few reasons, but the number one reason being that a Herm Springer collar is different from knockoffs in the sense that the prongs here are actually rounded and polished. So they are, they are not squared off, they're not sharp, the metal is completely polished, and it's not going to provide um, any you know, pinching or, or cutting into the dog's skin as some of the more inferior products can actually do. So please do not cheap out when you are purchasing a prong collar for your dog. Do not get a knockoff, don't get some cheap version. Um, make sure that you're only purchasing a Hermspringer collar. So um, when it comes to sizing though, that is also important. And I think that a nice rule of thumb when it comes to picking the appropriate prong size for your dog is this. Uh, if you have a dog that's under 50 pounds, then I would recommend the 2.25 prong. And if you have a dog that is over 50 pounds, then I would recommend the 3.0 prong. 
and that's just a nice rule of thumb to know when you're ordering. So again, Herm Springer, I'm gonna go ahead and link them. You can find them on my website, malligatormom.com, on my products page, and um, make sure you're only using a Herm Springer. So now we're gonna go ahead and introduce the prong collar to my six month old Belgian Malinois puppy here. And I have gone ahead and had to remove several links to make this fit her properly. Chances are you're probably gonna to have to do the same. Lots of people have to either remove or add links, additional links to make these fit their dogs properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put this on your dog, how it should be fitting nice and high, up around the ears, very high on the neck. So there you have it. This collar should not be placed down here. This collar should be sitting nice and high, just like it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my leash here on the half ring. And again, it's the half ring that actually activates this collar. So a great place to practice and introduce leash pressure with your prong for the first time is actually just the open road where there's not very many distractions. There's not a lot on the ground such as grass and that kind of thing that she can get busy sniffing or, or be too preoccupied. You really do want her attention for this exercise. Um, a lot of people even introduce this inside the house, which I've done as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start doing some directional changes. A lot of people will just walk in figure eights and that's fine too, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what it means to let her kind of walk out in front of me a little bit, provide that leash pressure, and cue her to come back to me. And I want you to pay close attention to when I release the pressure from the leash because that is what is cueing my dog that she's starting to understand how she can make the decision for herself to turn the leash pressure off. So let's go ahead and take a walk here and show you exactly what I mean. Good. Crisis. Good, good girl. Good girl, yeah. Good girl, good girl. Very good. Good girl, good girl. So what you'll see is that my line becomes taut, right? And then the second she moves in my direction, I'm gonna let go. Crisis, good. So very slight leash pressure is all it takes. Good girl, crisis, good, good. So again, walking back and forth, doing figure eights, good. And just providing that slight leash pressure is a great, is a great. It's a great way. So again, just doing simple figure eights in a road is a great way to introduce this prong collar. Good. And notice that when I'm changing direction, I'm not providing constant pressure, right? I plant myself and I pull on the leash, okay? I'm not continuing to move forward. I plant, provide that pressure and cue her in the direction I want her to go. So again, I'm going to plant myself. Good, okay? So because Crisis is actually doing so beautifully on the prong already, because I've done the groundwork of helping her understand what that leech pressure is and how to turn it off, she already knows how to do that. I'm gonna use Malligator Dad here as an example of what you can do if you're having a little bit of trouble with your dog and if you want to improve your leash handling skills when it comes to leash pressure. So we're gonna use him as an example and we're gonna walk down here and I'm gonna show you what I mean because this is a mistake that I see a lot of people making when they're using the prong by applying too much pressure and holding the pressure for too long rather than providing a gentle tug of the pressure, which is a clearer form of communication. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So go ahead. In this example, Malagander Dad here is, uh, is the dog. And I see a lot of people do this, right? We don't want to do that. Okay, instead, what I want you to do, go ahead, is I want you to plant and pull, right? Instead, this is what you do, which is just plant and pull. Perfect. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today. I hope that you found this video on the prong collar and how to introduce it and use it properly and humanely. 
helpful. And as always, please make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe button, and meet me back here next Saturday, 9 a.m. every week. Yeah.